This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Just, just warning you, your head might explode. This is Wretched Radio. From April the 20th, Ought 19, Nicholas Kristoff, an opinion columnist for the New York Times. You know, the Bible of the world system. Remember, the world can be a lot of different things. The word cosmos in Greek can mean the planet, the orb that we are spinning on. Not a flat earth. Thank you very much. It could be the people on the planet, or it could also be used as the world system. The world views the religions, the philosophies that are anti Christ. That is the world system. And that, that's the admonition to not be a part of that. We live in the world. We're a part of the world. But we don't dig and participate in or give endorsement to the world system. Perhaps no finer demonstration of the world system than the New York Times, the Bible of unbelievers. Headline, Reverend. Stop right there. She's not a reverend. Okay. Got to have certain qualifications for that. Reverend, you say the virgin birth is a bizarre claim? To whom was Nicholas Kristof speaking? The president of Union Theological Seminary. Now, I know the uni rule applies. Don't forget the uni rule. It is a good one. I'm not sure it's perfect, but it's very close. Anytime you hear of a church body or denomination that has those three words in order, chances are very good. It's wonky. United, Unitarian, Universalist, Union, Theological Seminary. Now, I don't know how strong they began, but I do know that like every charter of a liberal university today, it was based on the word of God. We are here. We stand on the foundation of scripture. Not so much anymore. I think they started in the middle of the 19th century. And their original charter was mostly biblical sounding. Then liberalism swept the East Coast. And now you've got this woman basically denying everything. Christoph, happy Easter to start, do you think of Easter as a literal flesh and blood resurrections? I have problems with that. Now, I don't know if Kristoff has problems with her statement or if he has problems with a literal flesh and blood resurrection, but he's not our focus. The president of Union Theological Seminary is. Her name is Serene Jones, S-E-R-E-N-E. This is not a peaceful column. It could make your head explode. When you look in the Gospels, the stories are all over the place. (laughs) This is 101, madam. Four different perspectives. Just like when you turn on the 10 o'clock news and you go from CBS to NBC to ABC to Fox, you're going to see slightly different takes on the same stories. (sighs) There's no resurrection story in Mark, just an empty tomb. Um, that's because there was a resurrection. And remember, we do let scripture interpret scripture. If there's a hole in one gospel, you fill it in with another gospel. (laughs) Those who claim to know whether or not it happened are kidding themselves. Please remember, this woman claims to be a reverend. This is an aggressive attack on, well, us. She leads a school that teaches people to be pastors, allegedly. Uh Uh-huh. What are they learning there? Well, this. But that empty tomb symbolizes that the ultimate love in our lives cannot be crucified and killed. Huh. I thought Jesus died to save sinners. You know, the way Romans basically teaches. Well, in Ephesians and Galatians. Well, pretty much every book in the New Testament talks about, yikes, for me it's impossible to tell the story of Easter without also telling the story of the cross. The the crucifixion is a first century lynching. It couldn't be more pertinent to our world today. But Christoph asks, without a physical resurrection, isn't there a risk that we're left with just the crucifixion? Crucifixion, writes the seminary president is not something that God is orchestrating from upstairs. Oh, okay. So I guess Isaiah 53 isn't right. And I guess that God is in control of everything, including the death of his son. 
Samantha! The pervasive idea of an abusive godfather who sends his own kid to the cross so that God could forgive people is nuts. I'm not paraphrasing. That's her terms. And that language, by that a godfather punishes her kid. Ooh, those diminutive terms drive me absolutely bonkers. For me, uh-oh, the cross is an enactment of our human hatred. Okay, I wouldn't, wouldn't disagree with that, but hatred for whom? God. This is the supreme demonstration. God, if God would just speak to me. Okay, let me just tell you the last time that God audibly spoke to people was in the person of Jesus Christ. And we killed him. That's how we respond to God speaking to us. So yeah, you're right. It is an enactment of our human hatred for God. But what happens on Easter is the triumph of love in the midst of suffering. Isn't that reason for hope? No, that's reason for wanting to just clock out and become a nihilist. And besides that, this is the old, it's a demonstration of love in the midst of, it's an example of love. No, letting yourself be brutally murdered is not an example of love. It is an absolute demonstration of insanity, volunteering to be treated like that for no reason. Yikes. Here, let's do a little test. Besides, that, by the way, I didn't edit any of that. You just heard the whole, like the first two paragraphs, and it just keeps getting worse. You can read it yourself at New York Times, but just make sure you put a helmet on with a really good chin strap. Let me just read something to you, if you don't mind. I don't think you will, because it's from the Bible. Starting at Isaiah 52, verse 13. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Just as many were astonished at you, so his visage was marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths at him. For what had not been told them they shall see, and that which they had not heard they shall consider. Who's believed our report? And to whom was the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he'll, he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. No form of comeliness. When we see him, no beauty that we should desire him. Despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised. We did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. We like sheep have gone astray, turned every one to his own way, and the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted. He opened not his mouth, was led as a lamb to the slaughter, silent before the shearers. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. He was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people. He was stricken, made him a grave with the wicked, the rich, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased God to bruise him, put to grief, an offering for sin. He shall see his seed and shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. This is repeated over and over again throughout this section of Scripture. Have you heard some key words? Here's verse 11. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I'll divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death. He was numbered with the transgressors and he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors let's just see now president of union seminary if we can figure out what that seemingly noble loving act was all about i think it's eight or nine times the word sin iniquities transgression is used in that short section of scripture maybe more did you count when you see a repeated word it's like the author is trying to make a point because he is. 
You see repeated words over and over and over and over and over again. What is he trying to say? I'm not trying to be emphatic here. This, this lamb is going to be slaughtered for sins, for transgressions, for iniquities. Hello, president of Union Seminary. But then again, she probably has unhitched her Old Testament anyway. If Jesus Christ was brutally beaten and hung on a cross as an example of love, then sorry, he was insane. There's other ways to demonstrate love than by being brutally crucified and gasping for breath unto death. Instead, it was for the forgiveness of sins. That is what Good Friday was about, and that is what Easter demonstrates. He paid it in full. It is finished. That's the glorious gospel. Why this Union Seminary is even in business anymore is a mystery to me. Until tomorrow, go serve your king. Would you please like, subscribe, or share this video so other people can enjoy this professional Christian content.